All right, this is case number 2217030DM Reed versus Reed. Today's date is August 22nd, 2023. This is date and time set for our continued motion hearing or our continued evidentiary hearing. Uh, Ms. Sheldon, your top left to me, if you'd state your name for the record, please. Yes, Your Honor. Jennifer Sheldon appearing on behalf of Ms. Kelly Reed. Mr. Reed? Yes, sir. Blake Reed. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Yes, Kelly Reed. Thank you. Uh, we went over a couple issues off the record, but basically what I'm about to state on the record. Um, at our last hearing in May, um, Mr. Reed indicated he had a couple more witnesses. And um, then Ms. Sheldon will be presenting uh, at least a witness for her client, she said. Um, so what I'm going to do, Mr. Reed, is I'm going to allow you to start with whichever witness you'd like first. We, we do have Ms. Shanks and Mr. Shanks uh, in the waiting room, and I will give the general instruction about sequestering, which means um, they're just not to be in the same room or listen to each other's testimony before they testify. And that's pretty standard, okay? Yes, sir. So, Am Mr. I, Reed? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Am I allowed to call Kelly uh, for questions again as well? Well, the the way we'll do it is this, be, because I don't believe that, here, here's kind of the way it worked procedurally, is you called Ms. Reed on your case, your, your side of the case, Yes, sir. And so um, Ms. Sheldon was able to ask some questions, but Ms. Sheldon and her client have not technically called any witnesses. Well, you called the person, the witness from our, um, our, our uh, parenting time supervisor that was out of order because of um, logistics. This person could only appear at that time. So um, technically, that's the only witness that Ms. Sheldon has called. I'm going to permit her to call Ms. Reed um, on her case as she presents her case. And then, Mr. Reed, you'll be able to cross-examine her. I'm not sure we necessarily need you to then call her again, if that makes sense. So the, the, the way we'll do it is I'll let you call these two witnesses because that's how you, uh, that's how we left it in May. And then if you then I, if Ms. So in other words, I guess I'll put it this way. If Ms. Sheldon doesn't call Ms. Reed, I'll permit you to call her again. But if Ms. Sheldon calls Ms. Reed, you're going to be able to ask your questions on cross-examination. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Does that make sense to everyone? You yeah, sure. Because, because the, the, my notes indicate that Ms. Sheldon planned to call Ms. Reed. So I was anticipating uh, three witnesses essentially today, and that will be uh, the two in our waiting room and um, Ms. Reed, and then uh, closing arguments, and, and we'll be all set for, for today. So, uh, Mr. Reed, your next witness, please. Um, JT Shanks. All right. So, Mr. Shanks, correct? Yes, sir. As I, as I labeled him, maybe you wouldn't know that, but as I was checking people in, um, that's how I labeled him. All right, Mr. Shanks, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, you are now in the uh, the hearing room, the meeting room where we're conducting the hearing. You have been called as a witness in this matter by Mr. Reed. He's going to have some questions for you. And then if she chooses to, Ms. Sheldon may have some questions for you, okay? Okay, that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, all right, and then there was one other thing that I need to cover with you before I swear you in. Um, a as a witness in this matter, and in, in, in most matters, the the court has sequestered the witnesses and what that means is you just can't be in the same room with any other person who will be testifying so if you're in the same room as anybody any other witnesses that may appear uh during this hearing we just need to have that person leave the room or you leave the room however you want to handle it uh we can't have the purpose of this is because we can't have witnesses listening to test testimony before they testify Right. That's, yeah, I understand. And I no, am. No. Sure. So you let me know when you're when you, it, you may already be by yourself, but you let me know when you're by yourself. OK, yes, I'm quite alone right now. All right. Thank you, sir. Raise your right hand, please. OK, do you swear from the testimony you're about to give the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? It absolutely is. Thank you, Mr. Reed. It's your witness. 
Uh, yes, sir. Can you, what's your relation to, um, Kelly Reed and the two children, Hunter and Hartley Reed? Okay. Uh, Kelly right now is my daughter-in-law and Hunter and, uh, Hartley are my grandchildren. Okay. Um, how long have you known or how, uh, let me rephrase this. How long have you been in both the grandchildren's lives? Uh, since they were born. Okay. Um, where did those uh, grandchildren live um, since they were born? Well, Hartley was born in, uh, in California. And, uh, uh, well, Hunter was too, but they're different cities. Okay. Um, so tell me a little bit about your relationship with the grandchildren. Oh, we've had a great relationship. As you know, we've been there with them just about all their life and, and, uh, we've played together. We've, uh, we've done a lot of stuff together and I don't know, we've, we've just been, you know, we've been in each other's life for as far back as uh, they are old. Okay. Um, and then when they moved to Michigan, um, did you ever see them after they moved to Michigan? Uh, yes. Okay. Did you come down, um, or uh, should I say come over uh, to Michigan to visit them? Yes. Yes, when me and my wife came through and came to Michigan, uh, especially to uh, visit them and uh, and Kelly and you too. Okay. When's the last time you've seen the grandkids? <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm bad on dates, but I haven't seen Hartley, of course, since... Uh, uh, one trip here to Michigan and I've seen Hunter the uh, time that he came back home with to stay with you and uh, you know we've come back through several times into Michigan and I've seen I've seen Hunter the most recently and I haven't seen Hartley and uh, since before they left Michigan sometime okay what kind of relationship did you have with Kelly? Well, prior to her leaving the state of Michigan. Prior to all this, I, I thought I had a pretty good relation with her. Although I greatly disagreed with her on a lot of things involving the kids. Okay. Um, what was your proximity to um, where the children lived with me and Kelly? What was your proximity, your living proximity when uh, we resided in California? Well, our houses were uh, side by side and the front door to your house and the front door to my house, uh, I'd say approximately around 20 feet apart okay all, all of my side windows faced your front of your house your front door and your front windows okay so you saw the grandchildren every day oh yes every day so how would that normally start off um at a opening of a day well normally be- normally the we saw the kids in the morning, they would come to our door and uh, uh, they would just come in to, to just visit with us. Sometimes they came in to have breakfast with us. And uh, I don't know, it just started our day and their day, uh, probably at least six days a week. So you had a pretty good relationship with both of them? Oh, yes. Yeah, I did. Um, have, have y'all tried to contact um, 
Kelly in regards to talking to the children? Since my she wife, let me tell you something. My wife has sent Kelly no more than, I'd say, 25 to 30 text messages and phone calls trying to contact her. But right. Kelly sent our message back one time and said, don't contact me anymore. Okay. It was that because y'all didn't have a good relationship or what would, what would be your reason in thinking that she wouldn't want you to contact her? Well, <laughs> you know what, in my opinion, it's just, uh, plain old meanness. That's all I can think of. Yeah. So what, what do you feel like it's done to the children taking their father and their grandparents out of their lives? Well, at, as hard to say, Honor. not being what, what, what objection, Your Honor. What's what the, is this? What's the, what, one second, Mr. Shanks? What's the objection, ma'am? Oh, he is asking about what the impact of this not seeing the grandparents is on on the children, and I don't think Mr. Shanks even he admitted that he hasn't seen the children. So he would not be qualified to testify as to what the impact is. It will be purely speculation, Your Honor. Mr. Reed, do you have a response to the objection? Can I ask him to speculate? Well, no, we, we have to go by what he has observed. Okay. Um, can I give an opinion? <laughs> no, well, you, you, so here, just to, just to maybe clarify this issue, you could talk about Mr. Reed, you could ask him how it's affected himself, Correct. but it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like he's seen the minors in a while. So it would be difficult for him to, to say, I guess is what the objection is and how I'm going to rule. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. I apologize. Um, Mr. Shanks, how would how would you say it affected you? Nobody else, because you don't know how anybody else feels. Um, how would you say it affected you? I'm going to tell you, I love those kids. And it's been very difficult for me not to ever be able to talk to them, see them spend any time with them and I I just can't fathom why a mother would want to hurt her kids to that extent. Okay. Um kind of tell me a little bit how how old are you, Mr. Shanks? I'll be 80 years old in a little over a week. And how is your health? Well I've got a serious heart problem. And I've got cancer, and I'm hard. I'm hard of hearing too. So, uh, you know, I've. I know, as a matter of fact, and I've expressed this to my wife. I've, I've exceeded the longevity of every member of my family, and it looks like, in my opinion, I've. Uh, my dead, my, my, I'm on a dead end road. I just don't know when the sign's going to show up and say, this is it. But it's the way I feel today. It's, it's an effort to, uh, to get mobilized. Um, would you like to see the grandkids? Well, certainly I'd like to see them. I'd like, uh, if I can't see them often, I'd like to at least be able to talk to them, maybe, uh, you know, several times a week or as often as, as, as they can want to talk. Okay. Um, is there anything that you can, that you would like to say about the situation that you have firsthand knowledge of, um, the, the divorce? I'm, that... I'm going to. I want to offer my opinion 
on the characters of two people. Is that okay with the judge there? Um, t the the two people being being Kelly and Blake. Okay, so he here's how I I can I can uh, direct you. Mr. Reed can ask you about which person he'd like you to to speak. <laughs> so if if he wants if Mr. Reed wants you to talk about Mr. Reed's character, he can ask you that. If he wants you to talk about uh, Ms. Reed's character, he can ask you that as well. It's just a little bit of a vague question. That's all. So the 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 answer from me is, let's wait and see what Mr. Reed asks you, and then then um, we'll see where it goes. So, Mr. Reed, go ahead. Yes, sir. I apologize. Um, what uh, can you give me any? Um, would you like to tell me about my character? I guess I should say. All right. Uh, I'm going to say this. I, Kelly has made Blake out to be the biggest monster ever walked the face of the earth. And I'm going to tell you firsthand, uh, in California, uh, the number of homeless people that he helped is something I can't fathom. And the trouble he took to mentor young men who are going on the wrong side of the law and took time to take them in, teach them a trade that makes them some of the top carpenters in the, in the Central Coast. And yeah, I, He's made them into the, some of the finest young men you're ever going to meet. And that don't sound like a monster to me. And I'll tell you something else. Monsters don't get up in the middle of the night and go up to a nursing home because a man he knows up there has Alzheimer's and he's up there very combative to the staff. He's shitting all over the hallways of the complex. And Blake goes up there in the middle of the night, calms the guy down, gets him in the shower, cleans him up, and sits there with him all night. Now, does that sound like a monster to you? Well, let's talk about uh, you, you've been in my life since uh, 13 years of age, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's quite obvious that I made wrong choices in life in my younger years. Let's, uh, don't we all? What, what kind of change have you seen in the past? Uh, well, let's let's keep it to um, the uh, time frame of the marriage with Kelly. Well, I think uh, I told you what. You know, I've got two other sons. And I told you once that what you'd accomplished in your last oh, five, six, seven, eight years is, is uh, maybe is prouder, prouder than I am of the other two. So. Okay. Um. You lived in Hawkins, Texas, um, roughly six years ago, correct? Well, yeah. longer, seven years ago. Yeah. Um, and you had a, you and your wife had a log cabin that was uh, built um, yeah. next to mine and Kelly's residence, correct? With what? It was it was right next door to where me and Kelly resided, correct? Oh yes, that's right. And you had a house fire, and you lost your house, correct? Right. Yes. Uh, where were you living after the house fire? Well, sir, for a brief while, we were we were staying in an RV trailer that uh, was out there on the lot, right next to where our house had burned. 
Okay. Um, do you recall an evening um, during that time that y'all were staying in the RV trailer um, that um, me and Kelly had had an argument and I came to the RV to let y'all know that I would be leaving and I'd be back in a few days. Yeah, I remember that. Can you tell me about that? No, oh, yeah. Honor, I would object to lack of foundation. We would need more details than 10 years ago, sometime in the evening. Okay, we. Well, can you narrow it down a little bit, Mr. Reed? Yes, sir. Yeah, I never said it's 10 years because I haven't known Kelly. Yeah, I, I think it was six or seven years ago, but it, yes, any, anyway, um, let's, I understand. let's narrow it down. Or I heard him say, I heard you say, Mr. Reed, about six or seven years ago, but yes, let's sir. narrow it down a little bit. Yes, sir. Do you remember, Mr. Shanks, do you remember a night that uh, Miss Reed followed me over when um i was discussing leaving and her I, having a fight on her i i remember it well uh, i know y'all were you were y'all were having an argument i have no idea what for and you came down so yeah i'm i'm gonna leave and the next thing i know kelly's there she got a pistol in her hand she points it at you it doesn't fire and she slams it into your face as hard as she can hit you I remember that just like it was last night. And uh, do you remember what I did? Uh, I think you turned around and got the hell out of there. I think you looked at your teeth first, then you just got the hell out of there and got your truck and left. Uh, um, what did she do with the gun after that point? Uh... I think she threw it down on the bed. Okay. All right. Um, I pass the uh, witness, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Sheldon. Do you have any questions for Mr. Shanks? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Shanks. Yeah, you'll have to speak very clearly because I'm hard of hearing. Okay, can you hear me? Say again. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. I may not make out every word you say. It's uh, I have a problem with different voice pitches. So uh, your, the pitch of your voice may be difficult, but I'll uh, if you speak slowly and clearly, I'll try to uh, grasp it. Thank you. Mr. Shanks, where do you reside? Uh, right now, I reside in uh, in Michigan. Do you reside with your son, Mr. Blake Reed? Uh, no. I, res I reside in Mancelona, and uh, he's residing in uh, Traverse City. When did you move here? Do what? When did you move relocate to Michigan? Uh, let me see. I actually think it was uh, in January. And uh, we had to we had to close out some things in California. We got that done. And uh, been here probably permanently uh, well we've been back here permanently for about a month I guess okay. are you in a are you in a rental where are you residing I'm we're residing <laughs> in a cabin that I built in Mancelona.
And is that the cabin that Mr. Blake had owned pre previously? I object. Is this about children or property? Ms. Sheldon. Your Honor, I am trying to see where he, this witness is currently residing. He stated Manslona. Uh, I think it's still relevant. Well, I yeah, I'm trying to figure out. He you you, you pointed out, Ms. Sheldon, he hasn't seen the minors in a while, and he's stating he doesn't live with Mr. Reed. So, what what yeah. what is relevant about where Mr. Shanks lives? I will move on, Your Honor. You. Mr. Shanks, you stated that Mr. Reed has has done really well for himself. Is that correct? No, I didn't say he's done well for himself. I said he's done well for others. He's done well for others. Okay. Yeah, he's very he's very diligent about helping people. And you indicated that there was an incident of uh, some kind of domestic violence in when, what year was that? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't recollect years that, that much. I'm 80 years old, but I'll tell you, it was in, uh, like I said, in the last, oh, had to be in the last seven years, I'm sure. Maybe even accidentally in eight years, but I think more like so. That you know, that's that's as far close as I can get you with my memory on something so going when, back that far. So when that incident occurred, do what? When that incident occurred, would you say it was beginning of the relationship? Were there any grandchildren born at that time? At the beginning of their relationship? Yes. Was it in the beginning of their relationship or marriage? Uh, well, there's a there's another child, but I'm not sure if before or after marriage. That child is not involved in the custody hearing. Do you recall? Mr. Reed um, threatening Mrs. Reed. I never heard him threaten her. Not not one single time. Okay. And did Mr. Reed ever go down to your trailer with a shotgun? No, I had a shotgun in the trailer. Okay. Did you ever tell Mr. Reed that he needed to put down the gun? Uh, Mr. Reed never had it in his hand. I had the gun because my wife is deadly afraid of snakes. And we were out there in an RV out where she had seen lots of snakes. So you don't recall an incident in October of 2015 where Mr. Reed came and grabbed Miss Miss Reed out of the trailer. No, he didn't grab nobody out of that trailer. Okay. That's, and that's you don't, totally false. And yet, that is the police report that was made at that time. Would you be able to tell us if we if I showed you the police report? Well, let me tell you about the police report. No, was, the question was, is, Mr. Shanks, the question is, would you be able to recall if I showed you the police report? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you there, Counselor. I was in the room when she was giving her report. I told the officer when she was through that I wanted to give a statement. At that okay. time, at that time, the officer told me, he didn't need my freaking statement and to get out of the room while he was taking hers. Okay. Point blank. I understand that. And that night was Mr. Reed arrested for domestic no. violence. No, he wasn't even there when the 
uh, deputy came out to take a statement. Was yes, Mr. Reed gone. ever arrested for domestic violence? Do what? Was Mr. Reed ever arrested for domestic violence? I don't recall him ever being arrested for domestic violence. Okay. When did Mr. Reed come to California to live with you or live near you? Uh, hmm. That is a good question. Let me think back. Let's see, we're in 2023 right now. I, I don't know. I'd say probably well, I'll see, Hartley was blind there. Shortly after they got there, I'd say it's been uh, Six years, hardly six years or seven. Six, I think. Anyway, uh, uh, around around that time. Okay, when he come to when when he came came to live with you, did you know that he was wanted in That's Texas? What? Say that again. Did you know that he was wanted in Texas? that he had arrest warrants? Uh, no, I don't, I don't remember him having any at that time. I know, I know some situations came up after that, that were, uh, <laughs> they weren't true, but they were put into effect anyway. Okay, what situation would that be? Well, he had a uh, uh, Wood County constable that was very addictive to him. And he made up a bunch of erroneous charges and got the uh, Wood County DA to accept them. But uh, when Blake went back to Texas and his lawyer got through with Wood County, they had to drop every one of them except one, and that was a misdemeanor. And I'll tell you something else. Blake's attorney said, if you'll let me file civil rights charges on this county, I'll make you a rich man. Objection, Your Honor. That was a hearsay. Stained. Well, it's the truth. I don't care whose hearsay it is. Mr. Shanks. Yes. Was Blake Reed convicted of evading arrest with vehicle and sentenced to 10 years and for and that sentence was for five year probation and fines do you recall that well i, rem I remember that, that that's the only charge that was able to be enforced was was evading now what is okay. what is fine or sentence or all that was I don't, I don't know. I can't tell you that because I don't really know. Okay, that's fine. That's fair. Mr. Shanks, do you know that uh, Mr. Reed was also arrested earlier in January 2023 in Grand Traverse County? He did what? He was arrested. I object. I was never arrested. Well, she can still I'm ask him if question. he knows if you were. Okay. He can say yes or no. Okay. All right. Uh, give me the question again so I understand exactly what you're saying. I'm asking you if you had any knowledge that he had trouble with the law, either arrested, arrested and had issues with the police in Grand Traverse County earlier this year in January. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know of any. Okay. 
And do you understand that Mr. Reed has an order for custody and parenting time and he has to follow that order? He has, has an order for custody time? Yes, parenting time. Well, I don't, I don't know he had an order for it, but uh, I know he's tried many a times and, and was denied it. Okay. Did you know that he is allowed to supervise parenting time even now, which he is not exercising? Well, how would he do that living there and her living in Texas? He is allowed to supervise parenting time and he's allowed to go to Texas and have parenting time with the kids. Did you know that? Uh, well, no, I didn't. But I don't know how he's going to go when she's taking all of his money. Is Mr. Reed not working? Well, yeah, he's working, but she's still getting mostly everything he makes, every penny. I know what, he doesn't have enough money to go uh, hardly buy lunch with. I don't know why she's not working. There must be thousands of women in her case that have children, uh, single women that are working a full-time job. I don't know why she can't do that. Okay. Your Honor, I do not have additional questions for this witness. Thank you. Mr. Reed, do you have any redirect or basically what that means is any any follow-up questions for Mr. Shanks based on Ms. Sheldon's questions? No, sir. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Shanks. You're all set for today. That's it? That's it. Yes. Yes, sir. More. Thank you. I can't say any more. That's correct. You, you, they've asked uh, the parties have asked you all all the questions all all the questions they have for you. Okay. Well, I have a lot more. Thank but, you, sir. Mr. Reed, uh, your next witness, please. Is there any way for me to pass that witness till she calls Kelly? Um, can you help me understand what pass the witness means? Uh, I wouldn't know the right terminology. Can I have her call uh, Kelly first? uh well what's the purpose of that um i'm trying to come up with some notes here to group on what needs to be asked that wasn't already covered so we're not wasting court time well the the reason why i've had witnesses out of order is because this is the only time they could appear your witnesses are here so i can give you a couple minutes if you want to think we can take a five minute break and you can write down notes but it is, you know, these from my my understanding is these are the same exact two witnesses that you were going to call on May 23rd. And now we're three months, you know, later. It seems to me like you've had an adequate amount of time to get your questions ready. Okay. Well, then okay. I pass witnesses. But I don't want to. I don't want you to lose your opportunity to call because I I believe you've raised the issue of not being able to call witnesses before, and I don't. You have had an adequate amount of time to raise witnesses, so uh, whether I, you raise that issue is up to you. I, I'm not preventing you, of course, from filing any objection. I'm just stating I want you to be able to present the witnesses that you would like, and I'm providing you with that opportunity. Yes, if you right. like five minutes to get some notes together, I, I don't care. But um it's time to call that witness or, or or not i suppose yeah no i'll pass it and i'm not saying that you it, i was denied it before and a different judge but that's not you and i understand you're allowing it oh well, i'm but, not criticizing it i'm not criticizing you or anyone i'm just trying to get i'm trying to fill in the picture for you here and help you out on th this is your opportunity if you'd like it, it wasn't it not, wasn't even a comment on that i'm just it's me just saying to you Look, here's your opportunity. If you'd like, you can take advantage of that or, or not. That's all. It's not a, not a big deal. I'll pass. Okay. Do you um do you want me to leave them in the waiting room or do you want to text them to hang? I don't care if you it's 
these are your witnesses. So however you want to handle whether they want to stay on the line or the phone or however we're calling it when it's a Zoom call. Okay. okay. So uh, I, I, all right. Sir, then um, do you have any further witnesses or exhibits? I'd like to call Kelly Reed. Okay. That that uh that has been noted. Um uh, Ms. Sheldon, can you verify whether you plan to call Ms. Reed? Yes, Shana. We'll Maybe. be calling Ms. Reed. Okay. So Mr. Reed, I acknowledge again your request. What we're going to do, like I said, is uh, Ms. Sheldon's going to call Ms. Reed and then you'll be able to ask her questions and that should take care of it. it the, I guess just so you know and so the record's clear, if if Ms. Sheldon, and I, I believe I already said this, but it doesn't, it, it's fine. Um, if Ms. Sheldon wasn't going to call her client because she doesn't have to, um, I was going to let you call her again, Mr. Reed, but I think this sort of takes care of it. For, for our purposes, there's no need for you to call her now and then to have Ms. Sheldon call her again. But yes, other sir. than Ms. Reed, uh, Mr. Reed, do you have any further uh, witnesses or exhibits? Not at this time, no, sir. Thank you. All right. So plaintiff rests at this time. And then Ms. Sheldon, I'll let you, I, I'm calling it reopen your case, you know, because we, we like I said, I, most of this I said at the beginning, but it's it may be helpful to work uh, to restate. Ms. Sheldon, your first or, or next witness, please. Ms. Kelly Reed. I'm here. All right, one second. Ms. Reed, if you'd raise your right hand, please. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, Ms. Sheldon. Thank you. State your name for the record. Uh, Kelly Goggins Reed. Okay. And you are the mother of Harley and Hunter, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And I know that you testified um, through the cross examination and direct examination by the plaintiff in this case um, about three months ago. So it's a little bit <laughs> uh, hazy, I'm sure. But um, I wanted to ask you some questions about your relationship with Mr. Reed. Uh, you married in 2015, is that correct? Correct. And you resided in uh, Texas at that time, is that correct? Correct. And were Mr. and Mrs. Shank living um, nearby or somewhere with you and Mr. Reed? Um, we actually built a house next to their house on the same property. Um, they weren't home most of the time. Um, so yeah, technically they resided beside us. Um, but, um, I believe he was doing hot shot and traveling at the time. So we only saw them, uh, here and there when they were, uh, back in town. Okay. Now, sometime in the relationship, um, there was incident, domestic violence incident. When did that start? Um, they started within a month of marriage. And there was much talk about the gun incident. Is that um, the incident that the police report, the exhibit, um, defendant's exhibit E. No, I'm sorry, that's not. It. That would be C. Is that the incident? Uh, yes. Okay. And that was from about September 28, 2015. Is that correct? Correct. And at that time, were you pregnant? Yes, I was. I was around five to six months pregnant at that time. And what happened? Uh, we laid down for bed that night. Um, I don't remember uh, what set him off. I, I don't recall a lot of the events that did happen. Um, I was thrown onto the bed. I was held down 
Uh, he tried to suffocate me with a pillow multiple times. Uh, I was able to get away, uh, but he would stand in front of me. There were two different doors. There was one door to the outside, and then there was one door, obviously, into the inside of the, the, the rest of the house. Um, so he would go back and forth between the doors, not letting me escape the room. Um, I ended up uh, punching my fist through a glass gun cabinet, uh, severing my right arm uh, to get a gun to get him away from me. Um, I did pull the gun on him, gun jammed. He pulls out a shotgun. In that time, I was able to get out of the outside door and run to the camper that JT and Kathy were staying in. Um, I beat on the door until they opened it and I ran inside there thinking, hoping that they would help me. Uh, Blake comes in there. Um, I don't remember exactly what he said, but something along the lines is he was going to kill my other son. So I took the butt of the gun and hit him across the face with it. JT then took the gun from me um, and JT ultimately called the police. Okay. Police came out. Um, I had to call someone to get my son, uh, did a statement with the police. Blake ran off, uh, which is typical of him to do. Uh, and I was ultimately taken to uh, the hospital by ambulance. And what kind of injuries were you, did you sustain? Um, cuts, bruises. Um, uh, I was under severe dehydration. Uh, I ended up staying in the hospital, I believe, two to three days before they released me. With Blake, what happened to Mr. Reed? Um, he ran, uh, the cops tried to get him. He ran, they could never find him. I believe that incident, they issued a warrant, um, and later came to pick him up. I, I don't really recall what happened after I left the, the property. And still you stayed with him. Is that correct? Correct. And why is that? Um, at that time, he had complete financial control. Um, he had moved all my belongings into the house we were currently living in, even though I had my own. Um, I really didn't have anywhere else to go. Okay. Was there another incident around September 11th of 2016? Uh, there were multiple instances, um, just several uh, major. One second, uh, Mr. Reed, did you have an objection? Yeah, well, we've already went over this. This is this is went over last last time we had a hearing. I mean, if we're going to repeat it all, that's fine. I was just letting you know it's already been gone over. She's already pulled the police report. She's already made statements. Well, I, I don't uh, I don't dispute we've we've certainly gone over some of these issues, but it, it was three months ago. And the other issue is Ms. Reed is now being called on direct. She was called essentially uh, you, you called her as your witness. And now Ms. Sheldon is calling her as a witness. So this is Ms. Reed's opportunity to present her her side of the case. OK, that, that's the best way I can kind of explain it. But Ms. Sheldon, we, we don't need to go over everything we have already gone over, but um, I, obviously I'm going to give some leeway Be, because for, for the reasons I just stated. Thank you, Anna. So Ms. Reed, you had multiple incidences that are contained in that exhibit uh, C, is that correct? Correct. And addition to those um, incidents that were reported, domestic violence continued, is that correct? Correct. Okay. 
And I think we we discussed um, some amount of domestic violence that were more recent um, years. But as to since we we heard Mr. Shanks talk about um, you not allowing any grandparents parenting time, what are some of the reasons that you have that you do not think that it would be in the best interest of the children to have contact with the grandparents? Uh, first off, uh, the chaos of this custody and divorce battle within itself. Um, second, I mean, I, well, I mean, they're enabling the bad behavior and I don't need that in my life, nor the children's life, especially at a time like this. Um, when Hunter was abducted, uh, Kathy and JT were quick to make the trip to Michigan to care for Hunter. Um, I would call and text and ask for pictures um, of Hunter, and I would just get replies um, that would say that they're not in charge of the phone calls to Hunter, um, uh, that I needed to go through Blake and not them when Hunter was actually staying with Kate, Kathy and JT at the time. Um, but, uh, just that and a combination of emails, uh, text messages never came through. I've changed my phone number five times in the past year due to harassment. Um, I have gotten several emails. Um, they started out pretty civil, um, but that was around August when I first left and I figured just to leave them alone because of the chaos. Um, but they continue to badmouth me, um, telling me they hope their kid, that the kids don't get screwed up living in an environment where there's no love and her grandparents deserve better than me. Um, that I'm a bitch like Joy, which is Blake's other child's mother. Um, just comparing me to different people in their life uh, when I was doing the best to protect my kids. Okay, thank you. So let's go to how the children are doing. And um, first of all, has Mr. Reed attempt to set up any parenting time through other agencies or other means uh, to see the children uh, no he hasn't so he hasn't seen the children since April of this year is that correct uh, seen on video April of this year seen in person uh, would have been July for Hartley and October for Hunter right And do you believe that you can co-parent safely with Mr. Reed? I do not. Can I just clarify real quick? Is that July yeah. of 22 or July of 23? July of uh, 2022. July uh, 29th to be exact. And then October 6th of 2022 was the last um, in-person um visit i don't know how you would say that with hunter that was the last time he saw either one of the children thank you and mr reed essentially had about two months of zoom parenting time through hereford investigations is that correct that is correct As far as the children and how they're doing currently, would you update the court on um, where, how they're doing, where they're going to school? Uh, kids are doing great. Um, they just started school uh, Wednesday of last week. Hartley is in first grade and Hunter started pre-K. Um, Hunter starting school has been pretty rough. Uh, considering um, his separation anxiety from me, for one, 
Uh, but two, he has a fear um, that the school is going to hurt him. Um, so we've we've ran into a few obstacles there, um, but nonetheless, um, the teachers and I have sat down prior to school, just notifying them of the situation and what may present as far as his um, behavior. Um, but they update me every day with a note that basically says he's doing wonderful in school. It's just the initial drop off that we're having trouble with. Okay. So the school has started already? Yes, the school started um, on Wednesday of last week. Okay. I believe that was the 16th. Okay. And Hartley is continuing to uh, do well in school. She's enjoying school. Yes, she enjoys school. She was excited to go back. Um, she, she wants, she's, she's eager to learn. Okay. And you believe that you have the bond and affection with the children. How do you show your bond and affection? Uh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I meet all their needs. Um, it just depends. Uh, we have a set playtime every day. Uh, we're trying to get back on routine. Obviously, summertime um, kind of messes that up somewhat. Um, trying to get back on routine with school going. Um, we don't really get to play outside right now, considering it's it's about 115 degrees outside. Um, but we sit down, we read, we do homework together. We do puzzles, we play. Um, she's been trying to help me cook here lately um but um that that's kind of limited um but at least she's trying um she's a very good big sister um she's very protective of her little brother um yeah they're just growing and do you provide education and guidance to the children obviously you're putting them to school um, any other religion or any any other activities in the community? Uh, no religion. There's not many activities in the community. I, I tried to get her into a cheer camp and basketball camp over the summer. She ultimately decided that she didn't want to. Um, Hunter doesn't quite qualify for any of the the summertime activities, um, but he's wanting to play baseball. Um, he did just turn four um, on July 19th. So now that he is four, I can actually take him to the Child Advocacy Center and get him some counseling and therapy that he needs. Okay. And you are the one who ensure that the children are fed, clothed, taken to the doctor, dental appointments. Is that correct? Yes, I have them full time 24 seven. Okay. And they've been residing with you. Hartley has been residing with you. I mean, obviously, you've been the primary uh, caregiver all their lives. Is that right? That's correct and they've lived in that environment ever since July 29, 2022. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And can you describe your, your house? I believe you talked about it a little bit before, but you continue to reside in the same home. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And are you currently seeking employment? I am seeking employment. Um, I was waiting for the children to start school um, because there is no daycare availability in my area. Um, I planned on really hitting it hard, trying to find employment after our trial, um, which was supposed to start at the end of this week, but now has been pushed back. So until I can get court over with 
there's really no way of me getting full-time employment other than just um, working for myself. And what do you do? Uh, I just do odd and end things, uh, mainly cleaning houses. Okay. And how much time do you spend doing that? Um, here and there, um, now that the now that school has started, um, I've spent the past three days uh, doing jobs. So now that they're in school, I can actually do them during the daytime without having to take my children with me. And how much money do you make? How much is your income monthly? Uh, that I'm not sure of yet. Um, like I said, this is the, the, the most jobs and time that I've had to do with it, uh, but it just varies job to job. Okay. Um, and um, you discussed your mental health previously, is that correct? And that you're um, taking medication for your uh, depression, is that correct? Um, correct. Uh, before I was taking medication for depression, um, I have since been to the doctor multiple times. I have not taken any depression or anxiety medicine um, since I left the home in Michigan in July of last year. Okay. So you do not need any medication at this time? Uh, the only medication that I take is um, I take a meprazole every day for re acid reflux. Um, and then pain medicine as needed, haven't taken it in months. But both are prescribed by my primary care doctor here in Texas. And you take them as prescribed, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Regarding your relationship or communication with Mr. Reed, um, what are some of the attempts that you made to facilitate the relationship uh, between Mr. Reed and the children? Uh, to be completely <laughs> honest, not much of any. Um, he has shown that he has no interest in worrying about the kids, how they are, or what they're doing. As far as the Family Wizard app goes, the only messages that I get on there are harassment and have nothing to do with the children. Um, and Family Wizard is the only communication that is between he and I. Um, now, even though he doesn't ask about the kids, I will reply, oh, hey, by the way, your kids are good. Um, so I can't, I, I guess I should, but I, I don't really offer information if he's not going to ask for it. Um, now I, I will, let me, let me take that back a minute. Hunter was put into the hospital several months ago. Um, it turned into an ordeal where he had to be care flooded and put into ICU. Um, so I did take it upon myself in that instance to get on Family Wizard to let him know that this is what is happening and I would update it, date, update him accordingly. Um, ultimately, I just got harassed because he didn't believe any of it and I needed to show him proof of everything that was happening while I was sitting in ICU with a three-year-old and a tube down his throat. Okay. And um, let's see. so there were there were some communication between uh, you and Mr. Reed on Family Wizard regarding that medical incident. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Your Honor, that is Exhibit L, and 
if I may. Yes. Okay. Was I supposed to get these exhibits? Yes, they were all sent. Hmm. Okay. And obviously, Mr. Reed would have the same information because it, this is between Mr. Reed and Ms. Reed. Something different. Um, can you see what's on the screen? Uh, yes, if I zoom in, I can. Okay. I cannot see you for some reason. Usually I can, but um, I have the this document here marked as Defendant's Exhibit L. Now, do you recognize it? Yes, I do. And what is it? Uh, April 28th, um, it was 4.40 a.m. Uh, I had, Hunter had just been care flighted from one hospital to another. Uh, we had just arrived and got him uh, stable. Um, so I sat down to write this. At that time, I just kind of knew what they were treating him for, um, but also offered to update him with any new information that was to come in. Okay. And this is the Family Wizard app messages that you, the app that you used, and is it a printout of that messages? Uh, yes, it's actually, I believe, a PDF file that you can go in and it scrunches all the messages together on Family Wizard so that you can share it with uh, the court, your attorneys, uh, people who would need these messages. Okay. And this is the account that you and Mr. Ree set up so that you be connected through this app, is that correct? Uh, correct, this, this app did not work between us for quite some time. Uh, I took it upon myself to reach out to the company to ask uh, why we weren't able to see each other's messages um, and they they fixed the issue. I believe that was right after our last court hearing that I reached out to them. Okay. And this is the fair and accurate representation of the PDF that you obtained from the app. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to move to admit the defendant's exhibit L. Mr. Reed, any objection? No, sir. Thank you. Exhibit L is admitted. Thank you. Um, Ms. Reed, do you believe it is in the best interest of the um, of both the children to have the parenting time for Mr. Reed be supervised by a certified supervising agency? Uh, yes, I do. And why do you feel that way? I feel that the supervision is needed uh, to monitor the conversation uh, and the interrogation from him to the children. Uh, we were made very aware of that during his phone visitations that um, he actually attended, um, but also just for the safety of the children. Do you believe that there is reasonable likelihood of abuse or neglect of the child during parenting time? I don't believe that there would be physical abuse. Now, mental and emotional is very likely. I yeah. speculation. Yeah. Come on now. 
you're objecting to her saying that there wouldn't be physical abuse? I'm objecting to her with her speculation of saying that there would, as she started to speak of mental, whatever she could come up with to say, her speculation of mental abuse or whatever she was going with. She hasn't communicated with me in almost a year and she's going to speculate. Ms. Sheldon, I'll, I'll let you respond. Your Honor, it is my client's position and experience, and she can base her uh, opinion on the experiences that she had during that supervised parenting time. Um, I think that she can base this opinion on what what she's observing with the minors. We've sort of gone through a foundation of what of how much contact she has with the minors um sir you you are going to have the opportunity to ask her questions so you can um ask her about why she thinks that and and, and cross-examine her on that opinion okay. okay thank you Anna. oh yeah Ms. sorry yeah, I, that's that's my ruling yep Ms. Reed, why do you feel that there will be mental and emotional abuse of the children? Uh, not only uh, not only has Lydia from Hereford Investigations testified um, the same story, um, but uh, in particular, what I can recall, the last phone visit that he had with the children, um, the children were talking about playing with a donkey with a man named Steve. Now, Steve is family of mine, um, but all Mr. Reed could talk about was how their mother is a whore and she has another man around. Um, so ultimately, I ended the phone call and within 10 minutes, I had the police department knocking on my door. but I did not think it was in the best interest of my kids to be interrogated or listening to him call their mother a whore and trying, trying to get anything and everything they could out of the children so that he could figure out what I'm doing in my life. It, it like the children were a middleman for, for his information. So since you've had custody of the children in Texas with Hartley and Hunter, Hunter, did Mr. Reed express any interest in sending them gifts? Um, no, he has not. Uh, he himself has not sent anything, including Hunter's blanket that was asked for in the October court hearing. Um, now I've asked him, um, I, I didn't even ask him. I sent him a message on Family Wizard in July, or might've been about a, the end of June, stating what the kids would like for their birthday. That way it would give him a list of things. So if he wanted to take it upon himself to purchase them something, and send it to him, them, he could. Um, I did not ask for money. Um, I just said, you know, hey, if you want to send the kids some presents, this is what they are wanting. Um, he has not sent anything. No birthday, no Valentine's Day, no Christmas, nothing. Did he send any cards? Uh, no cards, no gifts. Um, a matter of fact, in in the end of June to July for the birthday um, messages, he said that that's what his child support is for. And do you fear that there is any kind of threat or actual potential detention or abduction of the children 
to intend to retain or conceal the children from you, from Mr. Reed? I object. <laughs> I mean, what's how the, did you? What would you say? I'm sorry. I think I cut you off. I, I said I object. How how could she prevent that if that's something I wanted to do? I mean, I I, I realize her lawyer's trying to lead her, but if she, how could she prevent that with a piece of paper, or how could she prevent it? That's what something I actually wanted to do, other than what they were trying to fab together. Well, that's not really the question. And to be fair, the language that uh, Ms. Sheldon is using is the exact language from the statute for parenting time uh, when a court evaluates the appropriate parenting time. So it, that's just language that the the it's legal language. Um, but you can ask her about the preventing. I, I'm not sure that that was part of what the question was. But if you're talking about the language used, I, I don't believe it's leading because it's it's the exact language from the statute. <laughs> Could you repeat that question for me? Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I'm asking, Ms. Reed, if you believe that there is any potential threat of detention of the children with the intent to retain or conceal the children from you by Mr. Reed. Absolutely. Um, and I can add on to that that I've had several messages that state that no piece of paper will prevent him from getting his children and that when if they see him outside, they would be happy to come up to him and that the police department could not do anything about it. So not only do I believe that a supervising agency would be in the best interest of the children but even leaving those agencies i believe will pose a threat to mine and the children's safety on trying to leave the premises and you are asking to have some safeguards if you were to if the court were to allow uh, in-person visits uh, supervised by an agency and what are some of the uh, safeguards that you need? Depending on the location would depend on the safeguards that I needed. Um, when we left the courthouse in October there in Grand Traverse, I was in the courtroom until 6.30 p.m. because they could not secure the location of the car for me and Hunter to get into the car. Ultimately, I was taken to the county line with uh, the share, uh, assistance from the sheriff's department to ensure that I was not followed. So with that being said, a supervising agency would, I would ask that they gave me a 15 to 20 minute window to leave while detaining him at that location, therefore he could not follow me. And are you asking that a certain amount of uh, miles radius uh, travel time between the to the location of the um, potential parenting time to occur? Correct. In in the in the town that I live in much less the county, there are no supervising agencies. The closest supervising agency would have been Hereford Investigations, which he is no longer allowed to use. So I've stretched the radius of my hometown to 40 miles for a supervising agency. So I would be willing to travel up to the 40 miles to let him exercise his in-person parenting time if he if he chose to to exercise that okay so you are not asking for any change you're re requesting that the court order um, continued custody order of sole legal and sole physical custody to you is that correct correct and you're requesting that the parenting time be modified to 
allow mystery to obtain a location or and and so a supervising agency that is within 40 mile radius of your address is that correct correct and that continued um, zoom parenting time weekly for 20 minutes and once a month in person parenting time for uh, I believe is it I don't recall how long the I believe it was be. go ahead I'm sorry I, I'm sorry I I lost train of thought. Um, I, I think it was for an hour or was it three hours for total on the weekend? I'm not sure what the what the original order had stated. Okay. So your request is to just simply follow the order except that supervising agency obviously has to be changed. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. Are you requesting any change in the child support? No, I'm not. Okay. It will be, I'm reading the um, order. It will be one weekend per month on Saturday and Sunday for three hours. And that would that given that you are defend a mother is provided with seven day notice by the our family wizard app. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you would like the court to know um, regarding the custody and parenting time issue? Uh, no, I do not. Okay, thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Reed, so do you have any questions for this witness or in other words, any cross-examination? I do. Okay. How are you doing, Ms. Reed? Great. Hey, how do you support your children? Uh, what do you mean by support my children? You know, most people go to work, they have a job, they support their children, they put, they pay for the roof above their head, utilities, clothes, food, etc. You know, all the financial responsibilities a parent takes on when they become a parent. Uh, I seem to be getting by just fine. Okay. How, how do you financially support your children? Uh, I rely on my family to help me until I get through these times. Uh, times. Um, take, that, that, that's take fine. All the, um, to get through uh, these times, uh, who did you rely on to support your oldest son? What do you mean? Who put a roof over your oldest son's head? His caretaker. Was, his caretaker? So since uh, he was yeah. born, his caretaker put a roof over his head, correct? Uh, his mother put a roof over his head. Okay. Did you pay rent, a mortgage, anything like that? I don't believe it's relevant. It's relevant on the, your financial ability to be a parent. I maintain no, the full objection. It is not relevant as to what Mr. Reed wants to talk about the first child, first son. Uh, I think we're talking about the minor children between the two parties. I, I believe your client brought up a child that wasn't in this marriage. Um, well, it's been he he that has been discussed uh, both today. Although today was just a, an alleged threat against the child by you, sir. Um, I, I don't know. We did discuss it on May 23rd. I mean, I've seen that in my notes. I, I don't know that we need to go That's fine. too deep That's into fair. it. Yeah, we, we should keep it to the, the minors at issue here. So uh, on parenting time, Kelly, you, uh, you're you okay with driving 
40 miles with no job, but me having a job, you want me to drive 1200, correct? I'm not wanting you to do anything but exercise your time as a parent. Well, and I, I believe I'm, that I can make the sacrifices that I need to make sure that my children are allowed to see you. Um, and I have to show that your I'm children? Our children. Okay, thank I, you. I apologize for that one. Uh, that are our, our, that I'm willing to, to co-parent or attempt to co-parent even though you make it impossible. Okay, great. So do you have a job right now? I'm self-employed. You're self-employed. What would you say you make? Uh, like Ms. Sheldon asked me, I'm not very sure right now. I mean, what I have you made? You said you just work. worked three. What did you make in the last three days? Uh, I'm not sure. Haven't haven't got the money from two of the jobs. So. So you so basically you just do work and then they tell you what you're worth. I do what work I need to do to make sure that my kids and my family are taken care of. So okay. I'll do as much work as I possibly need to do to make sure we have the things that we need. Do you uh? Do you know any single parents? Yes, I do. And uh, do they carry full-time jobs to support their children? Some do, some don't. Okay. Uh, you stated previously that my parents had never tried to reach out to you to have communication with the kids whatsoever, correct? No, I did not. That was on the your previous statement that my mother has never reached out to you to talk to the kids. That was not on my previous statement because I actually quoted things that she has sent to me. I'm talking the previous court date. Uh, maybe you forgot the previous time that we had the first part of this hearing. You stated my mother, Kathy Shanks, had never tried to reach out to you about seeing the children. That was your statement. I was asked if she had ever sent me phone calls or text messages. No, I have not received any of those. Like I also you, said, I had to change uh, my number five times due to harassment from you. Due to harassment. Okay. What's your email address? Is it the one that you used for the Jeep or the one you've had for all this time? Your Honor, it, it, this is irrelevant. No, I'm trying to prove. Well, well here, here's how I'll settle. I, I'm okay with him having that information. I'm not going to put it on YouTube. So if we, if he, if he, he, I think he asked it appropriately, which was, where i don't think he's asking her to state it he said it was it on the jeep or on the, the i missed the second part because there was an objection so sir do you, i'll ask it this way ma'am do you know what mr reed is talking about when he's saying giving you options for your email address i i do not he he oh. is aware of my email address it is um forwarded through my attorney um he's aware of my email address okay mr reed is it do you have her email address? That's what I'm asking. If it's TXBIG. Don't put it on the record, I said. Oh, I apologize. Well. Um, I didn't finish. So is that is that the email address we're referring to? Uh, yes. Okay. okay. So is that That's, helpful, Mr. Reed? Yes, sir. I just wanted to be able to prove for future uh, future reports that that is on record and she did receive those emails. Um, do you pay child support on your first son, Kelly? Uh, no, I do not. Were you ordered to pay child support? At one time I was. When did that stop? Uh, I'm not sure of the date it was taken care of. Uh, now my son lives with me full time. You are not oh. objection. This has been, this issue has been asked and answered when Mr. Reed called my client. Well, to be fair, I, I said I'd give some leeway both ways and, and we we were just addressing child support and I, I don't maybe, I assume Mr. Reed is trying to get it in finances because we have been talking about child support. So I, I, I'll overrule that objection. Thank you. Let well, me to reiterate, I mean, we're not trying to go too far into into that situation because um, 
I think her last answer basically told me that there's that that doesn't isn't going to affect this this child or could not I shouldn't say that I don't know if you're digging into whether that affects this child support that's all I'm saying Mr. Ray. okay let me I'll, I'll tell you the relevance is there was no child support paid and she was never financially supporting her child even though it's court ordered okay so then then I would sustain the objection as it's irrelevant I thought you were trying to relate it to somehow this case but I, I was giving you some leeway to establish that, but that, that's fine. Um, Thank you, Kelly. You had, you had said it, that I abducted your children, your child, your son, your child, your son. Is that correct? Uh, you did abduct Hunter. Okay. What is your definition of abduction? Uh, taking a child. Okay. Would that be something that you did when you left this house? Uh, no, it would not, uh, considering okay. I was taking uh, my children out that's of a violent environment. That I just, it was a yes or no. Thank you. But Ms. Reed, uh, Ms. Sheldon will be able to uh, follow up on issues if she thinks it's necessary on redirect. Okay. Uh, do you get financial aid? I do not no food stamps um any of that nature yes i do okay that'd be financial aid how much money do you get in financial aid uh food stamps i get uh 600 and something dollars um that i just started getting a couple months ago okay um you got assistance in california too correct uh, yes, I did. And how how were you able to go about getting that assistance in California? I had to get in assistance in California to make sure the children's medical needs were met. Um, you forced me to ask the government for money uh, so that I could pay for food and bring my part to the table uh, because I couldn't sell myself anymore. Okay, so how did I force you? You wouldn't buy groceries and you refuse to give your children the medical uh, services that they required. Wait a second. You're telling me I let my children go hungry. Yes, you would. Oh my God. Um, I kind of feel like it's not worth asking questions because you can't get the truth. Um, Hunter broke his arm here in California at daycare, correct? I mean, in Michigan at daycare, correct? Hunter broke his arm in Michigan, yes. Okay, where did he break his arm at? Uh, that I'm unsure. You're unsure. Is that what you want to go with? That is what I want to go with. I'm unsure okay. of when, where, or how it happened. Okay. Did Child Protective Services reach out to you? Uh, yes, they did. Okay. Did the Sheriff's Department investigators from Grand Traverse County reach out to you on the broken arm? No, they did not. They never conducted an interview over the phone with you? Not the Sheriff's Department. Okay. All right. But CPS did? Uh, yes. Okay. What, what did they tell you? Uh, it was a lot of back and forth. They never could give me a straight answer. I asked for all of the paperwork that was involved with the case. I was promised twice that they would uh, mail it to me and I never received copies of anything. So you're telling me that they never told you where it happened at? Uh, they said it was assumed that it happened in, at daycare. They weren't aware, which was why they were interviewing you, I believe some other people uh, and the daycare. Not Ooh. sure what happened. All I know is wasn't even aware of the incident. I had to call the doctor's offices myself uh, to figure out, try to figure out what had happened. Okay. Excellent. Who do you live with? Uh, myself and children okay whose house do you live in my mother's 
your mother's house and she doesn't live with you? No, she does not. Okay. I mean, you, you stated that you were scared that I would come abduct your children, correct? Correct. Okay. So if that was something I was going to do, other than just making a statement to lead the court, how, why wouldn't I have done that? Probably because you haven't been to Texas since, but one time and the one time that you did come to Texas, you sat outside this house for hours waiting to see movement in or out. You went to multiple gas stations, restaurants for about a week straight, and then ultimately ended up at the school district harassing my mother, my sisters who are teachers there, and my oldest son. And, and I'm sure there's a police report saying this because harassment, they would have filed a police report, right? Not necessarily. So if school wouldn't file a police report? Actually, with... actually, you know what? Let, let me change that. There is a police report because I ended up calling 911 when you tried to beat down the door to get to Hartley. I tried to beat down the door. Okay. Yes, but you were gone as soon as I could call them. And I believe well, you I were I sat up there for hours, you said. You were here for days and hours. Days, okay. You kept telling me that there was a private investigator watching me. Yes, there was. Ultimately, it was you. No, there was a hired investigator company out of Dallas. Okay, but I do know from your discovery that you were in restaurants, convenience stores, in a My little worn horse what town. Discovery? With the discovery for this divorce case. Okay, where where did that information come from? You. It came from me. Oh, okay. So I said I was sitting outside your house for hours. Your and bank I, statements show timestamps and places, locations. Okay, so I was sitting out there for a week, you said. Correct. And that shows that I was in front of your house, your mother's house, correct? It shows that you were in my town. Okay. Your town is right beside the town I was staying in. Uh, no, it is not. Okay. Excellent. Um, you said there's no way for you to gain employment due to court hearings, but the judge recommended to both of us to get jobs. You stay. Am I, am I still on here? Yeah, I think what was it? What? You, you were muting and unmuting yourself. I, I'm not sure. I, how. I apologize. I hit a button yeah. on my finger. No problem. Um, I just wanted to let you know. You you might want to re um, re ask that question because okay. it was cutting in and out on the mute. So you stated that you could not get employment due to court hearings, correct? Uh, I've stated I can't get employment. For yes, or no. Reasons. Yes, that I'm was just looking. I'm Could just I looking for yes or no. Answering my questions before I'm interrupted. Uh, well, let me rephrase. Yes or no? Did you say that you couldn't get employment until the court was over? Yes. Okay. And you stated to the judge previously that you couldn't get employment. Yes or no? because there was no jobs in your area. Correct. And that was the reason, yes or no? One of the reasons, okay. yeah. And the judge pulled up, and the judge actually pulled up while we were in court, yes or no, tens, maybe over a hundred jobs available in your area, yes or no? Uh, there's not a hundred jobs in Edgewood, Texas. That I'm asking what the judge, did he not state that he pulled up? And I'm going to go on the very low side, 10 jobs in your area, in your area available for you Believe with no qualifications. Yes. Okay, so he did pull up and let you know there was jobs available. Have you ever broke any bones? Uh, yes. 
okay. What what bones have you broken? Uh, my fingers and my tailbone. Okay. How did you break your tailbone? I slid on ice. Okay. How, how did that happen? I missed my step and fell on ice. Would would you say you're getting out of the passenger side of your three quarter ton Dodge pickup in a parking lot in Avoca, Iowa, and you slipped on ice and fell? Yes. Would that be accurate? Do what? Okay. Um, you stated. I, I said okay. I apologize. You stated in the previous hearing that you had problems with your lower back and tailbone because. I just beat you, correct? Uh, that that's incorrect. You you didn't state the reason why you had problems with your back was because of me doing some type of domestic violence to you. Uh, yes, I do have lower back problems. Or did you not? Maybe I misunderstood you. Uh, didn't say that you beat me, but yes, I have lower back. I apologize. You being pushed. Pushed so hard I ended up in the hospital. What well, one second, one second. We um we lost Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed. Hello. Yes. Hello, Mr. Reed. Yes, sir. I think my phone got disconnected or something. I apologize. No problem. We we stopped immediately. So are you we, able to? Uh, can you hear me right now? Yes, sir. I can. Okay. So we, we basically to... just stopped, and and you can ask your question <clears throat> again. Okay. Um, you stated in a previous court hearing that your back was messed up due to me. Correct. Correct. Okay. And the doctor in California diagnosed your problem with a sci sciatic nerve, correct? That, that's that's what you're... Ma'am? That's incorrect. Okay. What was your diagnosis then? I have a slip disc between L5 and S1. Okay. Where is that located on your body? Lower back. Lower back, right where the tailbone was broken? No. Oh, okay. So you're you're telling the court I broke your back is what you're saying basically. I'm not telling the court that you broke my back. Okay. I'm saying that I sustained an injury due to you shoving me on the ground, which ultimately led to hospital visit with okay. multiple other injuries to my body. You like to play victim, do you not? No, I do not. You don't. I wish I didn't have to. I mean, I don't have yeah. to, but I, I wish this wasn't my story. <laughs> okay. Um, you're a victim of your, your family, too, correct? When you were with no. me? No, I'm a victim no. of domestic violence from you. Oh, okay. All right. I uh, Were you aware that I asked your lawyer... For both of us to do a polygraph test on domestic violence and financial, and your lawyer denied that. I'm aware that you asked the judge yesterday. If I did, did that it. as well. Oh. Correct. Yeah. No, I just wanted to try to prove through the lies. Um, you had stated this uh, this time that you. Like the movie, you broke a gun out of a gun safe and um, all of that had happened and whatever other statement you had made on that. You had said that we had been married about a month, correct? Uh, no. Um, I was asked when the domestic violence began, it was about a month into the marriage. That particular instance that I wish was out of the movie, but wasn't, I have scars to prove it, uh, was several months into the marriage uh, while I was pregnant, which is why 
Okay, project, that's project, that's project fine. Project. Uh, several months. How long is several months to you, Kelly? Could be multiple months. Let's see. It, it happened September twenty eighth, so that would have been May, June, July, August, September. Four months, three to four months, okay. I believe, is several. Okay, and I believe were you pregnant before we got married? No, I was not. Okay. Well, I'm just trying to figure out the timeline that you came up with on all this because that timeline doesn't go you with that, but that that's fine. So you have scars from what on your arm? Uh, from a, a glass gun cabinet, yes, on my right, uh, between my wrist and forearm uh, that you and KT took me to the hospital for. I I thought you said that an ambulance took you to the hospital. Oh, and I left. Took me, ma'am. Well, I'm just trying uh, to figure yes. out what story you yes. want to go with. Uh, there's not a story. I know I had to tell stories to the hospital so that cops weren't involved uh, because well, the I, cops are already involved. You stated the cops were involved with our entire marriage. It was nothing new. Okay. Okay. So who took you to the hospital? Did I, according to your first statement, I ran, and then you said me and my dad took you to the hospital. So who actually took you to the hospital? The ambulance took me to the hospital okay. that night. I was thinking of okay. another incident of how I had to seek urgent medical care um, okay. that your father had to take me to the emergency room. Okay. Excellent. When did you first get on Family Wizard? Uh, within a week of uh, the October court hearing for custody. Okay. Um. I'm trying to go back to pictures, and it's kind of hard. How long was Hunter in the hospital? Uh, three days. Three days. So you made a statement earlier that you were messaging me back and forth, and you couldn't deal with that while you were in the hospital. But I didn't get your message till five days after you sent it. I'm trying to come up with a timeline here. That's fine. But yes, I didn't really respond to much on my phone due to the fact I had to lay in the bed uh, with a three-year-old who had a tube down his throat and was trying to pull it out along with his IV. I understand. Uh, we I can only imagine. Hospital. No, I'm just trying to come up with a timeline, Kelly, is what I'm trying and to come I'm up with. to give you that timeline. Um, you started asking questions about needing to know doctors, hospitals, this, that, and the other, but I had to have proof for okay. everything that can, I was saying. Ma'am, I just need you to answer the question. You said that he was in the hospital for three days, correct? Correct. Okay, I responded five days later because I'd never got a message from you on Family Wizard. That's on the, the, the exhibit that your lawyer submitted. So... Were you in the hospital for five days or three? Because he was you in just the hospital for three days. Okay. You just stated that you couldn't argue with me while you were in the hospital because you were taking care of your son, but I never even got the message till five days later. I don't believe that's what I just said, but okay. Um, ultimately, I just got harassed because he didn't believe any of it, and I needed to show him proof of everything that was happening while I was sitting in ICU with a three-year-old and a tube down his throat. Okay. I thought you had stated that earlier. I might have misunderstood you. What happened to Hunter? Uh, he had a condition that they thought was epiglottis. Uh, so, um, I <laughs> The day started out, he, he claimed that his throat hurt. Um, he kept slobbering everywhere. Uh, he wouldn't let me see inside his throat or anything. So I took him to the small urgent care um, to see what was wrong. They ran, you know, the COVID test, uh, strep test, all the tests on him. Everything came back negative. Um, they did his pulse ox, uh, which was fairly good at that time. Well, I'm just um, asking his diagnosis. What was wrong with him? I'm not sure. He had epiglottis. He had an abscess behind his tonsils that had to be drained. Okay. And did I state numerous times 
to please let me talk to my son, that would be an emergency situation. I mean, my son was care flighted at the age of three. He was not able to speak. He had a breathing tube down his throat. We're not talking the hospital. I never knew till he was out of the hospital. It yes, shows the did. time and date. It shows the yes, time and date. It shows, it shows 440 something AM the first night that we were in the hospital. You were I'm made aware sure. of that as soon as I knew. Okay. And I didn't receive the message or message you back for five days. Okay. That that's not my issue. Okay. So the five days after you were out of the hospital, this is what I'm trying to get at instead of beating around the bush here. The five days before I received the message, because you would never communicate with me through Family Wizard about the children that was ordered, that I set up the day it was ordered by the court. Needless to say, I didn't respond for five days because I never got an update. And I just so happened to check it one morning. And it was five days after you had sent me the message. So he was out of the hospital. And I asked to speak with my son that had just had to been care flighted and you would not give me any updates on my son or my family, any updates. And you refused to let me talk to my son in an emergency situation like that. Correct. Yes or no. That's incorrect. He had tubes down his throat at your house is what you're telling me. No, that's not what I'm telling you at okay. all. Your Honor, at this point, uh, no, Mr. I, Reed fine. is arguing with the witness. I'm just trying to get a timeline. That's fine. I'm done with that. You can't get a straight answer. Um, you had stated on the last conversation that I had with my children that I called you a whore to my children. I said, you, you're saying that I said that you, your mother's a whore or how did that go about? Because that's not on any records. And if you could have used that, trust me, your lawyer would have had it. So you're that telling me the place that I paid $50 every time to talk to my children did not record something of that nature. The phone conversations were not recorded. They the took notes of every conversation. Taken, they were taken down in notes to which Lydia, who was the case manager did come on and testify too. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she testified that I said that, you were... that there was another man. Oh, she shacked up with another man, not even knowing who this man was. But you okay. got aggravated. So with the that's kids all on the record. Who he was. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out. You told the me or the uh, the person. Oh, you just stated that I told you you were a whore, and now you're saying I told you that you were shacked up. Which one do we want to go with? It depends on which phone conversation, because they all happened. Oh my god. Okay, there's no need in asking. Um, did you ever give any gifts to my children, our children from my parents? Yes, I did. Did you give them the, the Christmas cards and Valentine's cards and so on? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. But your children said that they never received anything from their grandparents. Uh, kids will be kids, but they've received every gift that they've sent. Well, them. I, I agree they received them, but you didn't tell them where they were from, correct? Incorrect. So the children, okay. So you're a good mother, is what you're basically telling the courts. I don't have to tell the courts anything. Okay. Well, that's what you're trying to lead the courts to believe. I don't have to Correct. lead the courts to believe anything. I am a good mother. You're a good mother. I'm a good enough mother that I was a stay-at-home mom for your children, and that was okay while we were married, but it's not okay anymore. The situation changed, right? Because I got to see my kids every day, correct, before? That has nothing to do with me being that's... a good mother for my kids. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, you were just beat every, what, what would you say, every hour? No. Every for day? For a while, every day, for a while. Every day, okay. So you every were beat period. every day is what you're testifying to. And yet you decided to have not one, 
not two, but three children in a miscarriage with somebody that beats you every day. And you wanted that person around your children every day, correct? Something like this, that. This monster. You wanted this no, monster. No, actually, no. I didn't want to be pregnant that many times, which is why I ultimately had a hysterectomy so that you couldn't knock me up anymore. But okay. I love my children and I'll do anything okay. to protect them and take care of them. Yeah, yeah. Did you try to protect them from the pedophile that you let in the home in Michigan? They weren't in the home. Okay. But you're you're telling me that you were beat daily and you still had children and you, before you had testified, you had no way to escape. Yes or no? Uh, yes. I was going to ask your honor. No, no he, he, to... changed, he changed the end of it to the work to her testimony about not being able to escape. But otherwise, I would have said yes. So, ma'am, you will, you will have to answer that part. Uh, can I hear the question again? Yes. yes. So, you... You got pregnant multiple times, and the only reason why you never left is because you were never able to escape, is what you testified to, correct? Uh, correct. Okay. I, uh, between my yes or no. Old, yes or no. Uh, I just said yes. Okay, thank you. I was you. given the reasons why. Okay, I just needed a yes or no. Um, how many times did I travel back to Texas? when we were in California, would you say every two months or every three months or every month? Uh, every month for probation. Okay, you're correct for probation. We'll get that in there. So I was gone for, well, that's a that's a two day drive there, two day drive back, and at least a day there if I only stayed a day. So I was gone for five days. Did How are you unable to escape? Financial abuse. So, I was never left abuse. with money, just credit cards. If I credit wasn't in that, all my credit cards were cut off. Oh, okay. All right. And they, California doesn't offer any help to, to women that are just getting beat every day, correct? Uh, I'm not sure. I wouldn't know the avenue in California. Well, how'd you know the avenue in Michigan or Texas? I didn't. Okay. But if if you really were getting beat and you needed to escape, you you had or nine one one works in California, correct? If you have a phone, which was the okay. first thing taken from me. Okay. Excellent. Um. When we officially moved to Cal or to Michigan. A 15-year-old was living with us by the name of Sophie, yes or no? Your daughter, yes. Yes or no. Um, then you would say that she had some issues before she came to live with us, correct? Severe psychological issues. Okay. I would agree with you completely. Um. When did you discover she was sneaking out of the home while I was asleep? I don't know when it started. Therefore, I can't really answer that question. Okay. When, how long before everything unfolded and I found her missing at 11 o'clock on a rainy night? Did you, were you aware that she was sneaking out? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, how many, how, what would you say time frame? A month, a week, two weeks? Now, now, these issues we did go over. So let's try to relate it to the kids, Mr. Reed. Okay. Um, you were at the home on Liberty Drive when Sophie Brown was in the basement 
at 15 years old with a grown man, correct? Uh, no, I was not. I was actually so, at the cover uh, sheriff's So a video uh, that this 15, that I had to watch of a 15 year old. Your Honor, having, no, I'm trying to. I'm trying to paint this, where the line. This issue has been talked about extensively on his direct. I, I and agree. And now he's rehashing everything. I, I and agree. I don't think it's appropriate. I, I agree, Mr. Reed. And I, I actually just said that. Okay. Well, yes or no, you don't, you don't want me to be a father, correct? Never said that. Well, you don't want me to see my kids except for at your convenience. Never said that either. Right? Okay. The kids lived in the home with me and I saw them every day until you took all the money and everything else you could and left. Yes or no? Uh, not every day, but whenever. Wait, you where did they live? In the home. Okay, right where I was at. When you left, um, and I was able to find my vehicle, there was firearms all over that vehicle, yes or no? Correct. Correct. Loaded firearms all over that vehicle, yes or no? Incorrect. Incorrect. How big is a Jeep, would you say? 16 foot at the most? I'm not sure. You're not sure. Okay. You, if you were to turn around, you could reach past the back seat. Uh, that's false. Okay, Sportal. I can reach past the back seat. Excuse me, then. Okay. Um, the children, where were they located at when you were making your escape? With me. Okay. What? Where were they located at in the vehicle on this drive? In the back seat. The back seat. Do they have car seats? Yes. So where were the car seats when you were in the hotel room? Uh, probably under all the stuff. So you buried the car seats under everything when you went into the car into the hotel room? Uh, no, I ended up having to pull out stuff that we needed, which in turn caused a mess inside the vehicle. Okay. What else was in the vehicle? Did you have a dog in the vehicle? I did. Okay. Where was the dog located at during this commute? Front seat. Front seat. Okay. Do you know it's against the law to transport firearms in the state of Michigan without a concealed carry license, without them being locked in a case? Uh, no. Did you know it's a crime that um, you're a convicted felon and can't be around them? I didn't know they were there until I opened the door. <laughs> uh, that's not that's the question i asked though did you know it's a crime a felony in the state of michigan to transport weapons not locked up whether it be a compound bow a crossbow a firearm any of that a muzzle loader i'm unaware you, of the law you weren't aware of the law but you had taken a concealed carry course correct Correct. And they didn't make you aware of the law? Uh, no, they did not. It's a concealed carry. Okay. <clears throat> Where is that dog at? Here at the house. So the children had said that the dog was no longer there, correct? And that you sold the dog? Uh, they may have. Okay. But the dog is, is there. Is what yes. you're testifying to. Okay. When did the dog come back? The dog never left. So you have possession of the yellow lab. Correct. Okay. Has he been to the vet? Uh, not recently. Not recently. When's no, the last no. time he's Since irrelevant? This has to do with this. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. 
Well, well, you can tell me how it's relevant to the kids if you'd like. We're not trying the property issues right now. You can later. Okay. The, if right. you have, no, I'm I'm saying if you have a way to relate it to the ch children, let me know. But I. Well, I mean, I guess it could be related because if the dog hasn't been to the vet, it hasn't been current on all shots. Would you venture to say that? Uh, no, I would not. So you have current shot records for him? Uh, I do have his shot records. Are they current? Uh, I believe so. Okay. How do you store the firearms in your house, in your mom's house? In a safe. In a safe. How many weapons would you say you have in that home? One. One. What happened to all the other weapons that you had? I don't believe it's relevant for you to Yeah, know. I do believe it's relevant. You're a convicted Because there's weapons felon. around children. There are no weapons around the children. If they're in the home, they're around the children. Okay. They're in proximity of the home. What's the, what's the question? I mean, you got to relate it to the children. Okay, I'm, I'm asking how many weapons are in the home? Are you, do you have, yes. Mr. Reed, do you have any any reason to wonder whether the children are around weapons is that what you're trying to get at the, a weapon has been used in an assault against me which <laughs> makes me think that she could use a weapon in assault against a child as well and i'm speculating like she did so you're gonna so you can ask her if she's assaulted a child with a weapon uh, I'm just asking how many weapons are in the home. I know why you're asking because you want to know for the property issues, sir, to know the value of things. That's why I'm not getting at that. If you can okay. relate them to the children, we I'm allowing that part. You have your own opportunity to try property issues at a later date. Okay. So just I, I'm giving you leeway here, but I'm trying to direct you to get back to the children because we're finishing this testimony, the, the child related issues testimony and evidence. We're concluding that today. Okay. We're not coming back in three more months. Yeah, I, I completely understand. Um, but my point is you have a trial date set for your property issues. You and Ms. Reed can try all those issues at that time. But we're not okay. using this time to try those issues. Okay. That's all I'm saying. I, I understand. Thank you. Yes, sir. So you made a statement that you want sole legal custody um you want me to drive 1200 miles to see the children and lose my job to do so correct yes or no no you're aware i'm employed correct no you're not aware i'm employed uh i assume you're employed so the friend of the courts did not send you a letter uh no they did not okay So basically what I gather is you want full custody of the kids, keep me from seeing them or pay to see my children. And the only reason why you want me to have anything to do with them is to keep getting child support. Correct. That's incorrect. Would you say you live off of child support? No, I would not. How do you buy your cigarettes? I don't smoke. When did you quit smoking? uh about a year ago a year ago so you quit smoking after you left here uh, yes okay so how were you buying cigarettes if you didn't have any money and there was no money for the children when did i say there's no money from the children you said there was no money for food i wouldn't basically you said i won't buy the kids food but i would buy you cigarettes your Honor, I don't think that's what was said at any given time. Your client said that I wouldn't pay for food for my kids, but your client always had money for cigarettes. But I don't know, sir. I don't know that she testified that you bought her the cigarettes. That's what well, she, she said. said. She said that I was in financial control and she never had access to money but she had enough to spend $10 a day on cigarettes. 
I don't think you've established that she spent that uh, that amount on cigarettes either. Okay. Well, how many packs of cigarettes did you smoke a day, Kelly? Uh, maybe two. You smoke two cigarettes a day? Yes. Okay. I don't really know, Your Honor, if there's anything else worth asking because there, there's no truth to half of it. Okay, so. you said that once already. Ms. Sheldon, uh, any redirect? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Ms. Reed, regarding the incident in July with Hunter in the parking lot, um, during that time, you had, you had something you happened to the car, correct? Correct. We've already went over this. Well, just let me, I, I would agree, but let me, let me check in on this though. Is this the incident, Mr. Reed, where you were talking about the, the where she had uh, car seats in the hotel? Um, yes. So that's, that's why I believe it's right. Nobody said what date that was. So I didn't know until right now. But, okay, so it's um, going to be relevant. And then Ms. The Sheldon didn't say if that was 22 or 23, because when we started this in May, we have passed the yeah. 20, 2023 July. So we, we are no longer able to vaguely refer to July as uh, July, unless you want to tell me what year it is. So, but Mr. Reed confirmed that this is July 22, or at least I should say this, at least the incident he was talking about um, with the car seats in the hotel. So this I would assumed as much because of my note. I mean, I reviewed my notes from last time. I, in other words, I agree that we have gone over this, but I gave you leeway on cross. Now I have to give some on redirect. I don't want to relitigate every single thing. So let's let's get to this part of the question because then I, I turn it over to Mr. Reed for final questions. So I don't want to continue to relitigate this one issue, this one incident. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Reed, this incident had occurred July 30th, 2022. Is that correct? Uh, correct. And at that time, Mr. Reed took Hunter. Correct. And then you were unable to see Hunter until October 6, 2022. Correct. Is that correct? And you had not been able to talk to Hunter over on the phone. Is that correct? Um, he would give me certain allotted times to talk to him. But in order to talk to Hunter, I had to first talk to him. Uh, so he was in complete control and would end up hanging up the phone, telling me I never talked to his son again because I wouldn't do what he wanted me to do. And Mr. Reed wanted you to come and pick up Hunter at some point. This has already been discussed. Objection. This has nothing to do with the Jeep at this point. I agree. Thank you. Your Honor, it is relevant to the issue of abduction and refusing to cooperate and facilitate parenting time. But you've are, we've already got this was the incident where we even showed the video, right? I mean, we 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 went over all this. So I have notes. The reason why I can remember this is not because I, you know, you know, I, I've gone over my notes. So um, I thought you were getting to the car seat issue, I guess. So I'm trying to direct everybody to go over. I think this is my version of redirect. You need to be asking questions that go along with questions asked on cross. I realize Mr. Reed talked about an abduction. So I'll let you go into it a little bit more, but I don't want to go through the whole incident again. No, Your Honor, thank you. I mean, it's 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 fair and accurate that this, this was, Mr. Reed did ask questions on cross about uh, abduction. Here we are. And I, my point, Your Honor, is that Ms. Reed had not had even made trip to Michigan and had not seen the child, um, except what had occurred. Okay, thank you. 
Now, Ms. Reed, um, was there at any point a gun or guns that were available to the children or reachable for the children in the car? Uh, they were not reachable. Okay. Was there um, any point that the car seats were not available for the children during that uh, time in the car? No. Were the children in the car, in the car seats during the ride over to Indiana and to Texas eventually? Uh, yes. Well, Hunter was not in a car seat on his way back to Michigan. Okay. Nor was Hunter, he in a car when seat. You're referring time. to Hunter being taken by Mr. Reed and he did not have a car seat at that time. Hunter didn't have a car seat until- I August. object, Your Honor. How can she see in my truck while I'm driving? She never witnessed my truck. I made a phone this call speculation. to the police because Hunter was hanging wait, out. Wait, Miss Reed. Miss Reed, hold on. Well, um, maybe I'll allow you to, to um, I, I think it's a valid objection, but you can pursue a foundation, Ms. Sheldon. Okay. I don't know. Um, if she, I mean, I pers uh, to be fair, I, I don't know if she saw inside the truck. You could ask you could ask her. I don't know. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I think it's I think it's pretty safe to say that it's speculation until we have any other foundation. That's all. Yep. Thank you. Miss Reed, um when Hunter was taken by Mr. Reed, did he take one of the car seats out of the car? No, he did not. And you indicated that he did not have a car seat in his car. How do you know that? Uh, I saw him uh, put Hunter in the car and, and he had he did not have access to any car seats unless he purchased one. Okay. And even when you came to Michigan and you saw Hunter in Mr. Reed's car, was Hunter buckled in the truck that Mr. Reed was driving? Uh, no, Hunter was hanging out the back window. Objection. We've already went over this. Well, but part of your last objection is how could she know? And now she's telling you how she knows. So you and asked this is a, you asked for this foundation. So this is what this is what okay. you get when you ask sure. for it, I guess. She's explaining what you wanted her to explain, is what I'm trying to get at. Okay. Ms. Reed, so you indicated that at that time you also did not observe a car seat in the truck. Correct. Okay. And you talked about financial abuse. Um, and I know you tried to explain why you did you stayed with Mr. Reed. Uh, would you explain to the court fully why you stayed? Um, I had nowhere else to go without um making someone else's safety at risk anywhere that i went i kept going back to my old house um, that was vacant um, he would come in break the door i would come to my mom's house all night long he would drive by knock on doors knock on windows um trying to find me um there was there was no nowhere I could go that I could keep the other people safe um, because then they would become a target. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. So, Miss Mr. Reed, this is your opportunity for any final questions if you choose. Keeping in mind uh, the parameters. I, I yes, sir. Sort of describing earlier about these are just follow up questions or. Final questions about uh, the the redirect or what Ms. Sheldon just went over, okay? Yes, sir. And do you have any of those? I do. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Ms. Reed, how many car seats did we have? Two. Two. Would it be surprising to you that right at this exact moment, I'm looking at both of them? Uh, probably not because I have two in my possession. Okay. So... You took the car seats from here, but they're still here is what you testified to. Uh, no, I mean, I did take my car seats. Yes, I don't okay. know. If you, 
car seats in that house now or not. You just said we only had two and you wouldn't be surprised if I was looking at the two we had, correct? Yes or no? Uh, yes, I would be surprised. Oh, okay, all right. Um, the statement that you sign that your lawyer submits over, I don't know the correct terminology, it brings up my conviction for evading arrest in a motor vehicle in 2017 or 18. Are you familiar with that? Your Honor, uh, objection. This is a re cross based yeah, this, on my. This was not covered during redirect, sir. But it's in the facts of the court case. That means you could have asked on cross. I don't know. I don't know why you waited until now is what I'm saying. Because it was brought up about my criminal charges. That's why I was bringing it up to try to clear up. Yeah, uh, right. But we've already got so here the, we, we had that on direct. Then you had cross. That's when you should have asked. We had redirect. We And now you're on your final questions, which is only can only relate to what what Ms. Sheldon asked during redirect. And I already mentioned that. Okay. So, Kelly, you would venture to, you would agree with me that you want to do everything in your power to keep the children safe, correct? Incorrect. I mean, you don't want to do everything in your power to keep on. them safe? Would I do I'm sorry, Your Honor. I apologize, but I could not hear Mr. Reed's question properly. Okay, let me rephrase this. Would you agree that you want to do everything in your power to keep the children safe? I would agree. Okay. And keeping them away from their father would definitely keep them safe, correct? Under certain circumstances, yes. Okay. Did me and my children ever have problems or was it just me and you that argued? Uh, no, you you had it out with, uh, especially your daughter. Okay. All right. So she wasn't safe, but you stayed until I could get out. Uh, can you, uh, I'm having a hard time understanding this. I'm um, standing in the home that we lived in. You, you keep stating until you could get out. I'm looking right now at two different doors and a road and a phone that I could call 911 on at any time I wanted. Um, and you had a vehicle in the driveway that you could leave anytime you wanted, but you could never escape. I, I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, were you tied up? I have been, yes. But you, most you've of been the time, tied up. my wallet, okay. my phone and keys were taken from me. And this wasn't the first time I tried to leave. Okay. It was five times, five times I tried to get away from you and I couldn't get very far. Okay. And why, why was I, you stated that I came and I beat down the doors and I, uh, I threatened everybody you knew, but why, why didn't I ever go to jail for breaking into a habitation or any of that? I mean, you called the police, you said, would they not enforce the law that was written? They wouldn't hold their constitutional... They, they swear it up to the Constitution, but they wouldn't hold that for you? I'm not sure what happened. You got pulled over in the middle of town. I'm not sure what happened after that, other than they told you to get out of this town. They, okay. I was told to get out of town. All right. But all these times that you would leave and you would go back and I would kick down your door or drive my truck through your door or whatever the case may be, the police never arrested me. They never even charged me with that, times. correct? You were arrested multiple times. For breaking into a home? For breaking uh, into a home? Burglary? Yes. I was arrested for burglary of what? A vehicle. Um, 
a vehicle on my own property. No. And where did that go? It, would you would you agree that the the charging officer that did this was just in federal court and was tried in federal court? The officer that pressed all this stuff, he was just tried in federal court. Would you Your agree Honor. with me? Your Honor, there's no foundation for that question, and he is okay, going that's way fine. over and beyond what was covered in the redirect. I don't know that I agree with that, but um, I don't know that we need to get into. I think he's talking about the allegations your your client made that she had nowhere else to go and why. I mean, that's what he's digging into. So I don't know. I don't. I think he can if she doesn't know about the other issues. I, I don't. This is the first time we're hearing about. I believe it's the first time we're hearing about a federal court case against someone un, com, almost completely unrelated to this case. So. Okay, well, let me rephrase that. I apologize. So you, did your mom in July tell you that you could come back to live in her home? I didn't ask. You didn't ask. So what prevented you from going to your mother's house for the last five, six, seven years? Because I needed somewhere to go that you couldn't find me. Would um, it not be enough. because? Sure okay. enough. I got here, uh, you came looking for me, which is why I was not at this residence. No, I came there because I had a court order to come there because you tried a protective order that they dismissed. Um, would the reason would the reason be that you couldn't go to your mom's house be because your mom wasn't there? She was traveling back and forth to see your dad in federal prison? Uh, no, that wasn't the case at all. That wasn't the case. Is he allowed to be around children? Yes, he is. Does he ever come over to the home to visit the children? No, he does not. Okay. But he's around them, correct? Your Honor, we're getting into something else here. I, I agree. Okay. But, hey, to add that we, we covered this last time, too. It's not to okay. cut off this. I understand. As evidence, it's just we talked about it. And so outside of the scope of redirect is basically what I'm saying. Okay. So basically what, what I want to know, my last question is basically yes or no, you just want to keep receiving child support, but give me access that you know I can't obtain because of employment with my children. Uh, no, that, that's not it at all. That's not it at all. You expect, no. you, you think it's okay for me to drive 1,200 miles away from my resident and where they were resident at to come visit my children. You've where drove you back and like, forth from Texas for years. You drive back and forth to California currently. There's no reason I, that you couldn't drive to Texas to wait, see your children once a month. I Excuse me. Let, let me let me ask you on that statement. I drive back and forth to California? I, I'm sure you, you, you either have or are about to. Or I'm about to. Or can we base your statements on facts and not what you can come up with in your head? You stated that uh, I yes, drive back and forth. Yes, we can. Your, your parents currently reside in our old home. There has been a change of address uh, that they have mo now moved into that home. Can I ask you a question? What, why are you keeping track of my parents? I'm not keeping track of them. How so the, the the mail company called you and said, Hey, Kathy and JT Shanks did a change of address, is what you're telling me? Uh, yes, they did. The mail company called you. I your want Honor, this on record. This is argumentative. I don't think it's appropriate to argue about this issue, it's irrelevant. I, I agree, it's irrelevant, but I, you mean your client's just stating these things that. So I, what do you, I mean, Mr. Reed can follow up on her, her own statements. I, I don't, it's not particularly relevant for me to this case, uh, but um, if she's going to state something, Mr. Reed can ask her why she's saying it, I guess. But I what like I'm saying is it, it gets stated and then whether I, I weigh it as to whether it's relevant or not, even if there's no objection, 
I mean, that's part of what I have to do uh, as the referee. And then when the follow-up question that he has is continued to be irrelevant, I still have to filter that out. But I he can ask questions when she's making statements. Uh, Okay, let me rephrase that. Okay. You you made a statement saying that I travel back and forth to California. When have I traveled back to California since you know? I, I'm not sure. I made the well, you statement. Well, you made the statement. Travel, I'd like to know. I made the statement you travel back and forth to Texas and have for years. There's no reason why you couldn't travel to see your children. It's because you get all of my money. But let me rephrase that. You made the statement that I traveled back and forth to California. I want an answer of why you think that. Assumption. Assumption. Okay. All right. So it's, it's not only completely irrelevant, it's also speculative. So we don't even need to consider that anymore. Mr. Reed, any final questions? <laughs> no. No, I don't have any final ones. Thank you. Ms. Sheldon, do you have any further witnesses or exhibits? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Closing remarks, Mr. Reed. We'll talk. We'll we'll start with you. This is basically just as um, I'm not trying to be condescending, but just to let you know what a closing argument is, in case you haven't uh, experienced one or or can uh, or relayed one to court, would be um, how you see the evidence that was presented so this isn't your testimony it's not really evidence it's basically your argument about how you think the evidence went and and um what you want the court to do here okay. that's a simplified but i think you get the point <clears throat> i i do Thank you. um so i believe this whole hearing the whole child custody and and the divorce is got merits and related to the uh the marriage itself not the children me and my wife did not get along um uh, i think it's it's used way too much in civil court that you can make accusations and people can run with it but in in criminal court you have to prove me on a reasonable doubt and that's what she's done here and she's taken advantage of it her lawyer has included in everything that comes in to try to prove to the court that she is doing this because of a victim's thing she makes sure that's put in um because her client is in her words a victim and that that's put in every email communication to try to convince the courts that her client is a victim um i have had no issues with my kids there was never a marriage um that should have taken place to begin with um there was a lot of cheating that went on but that doesn't affect our children and my right to see my children um everything that kelly's came up with has been whatever she could say to make herself look better she's done no wrong whatsoever in her entire life yet a court in Texas took custody away from her and took her rights to another child completely away from her. But she's done no wrong in her life. Um, doesn't make sense to me, but maybe it's convincing to a court. Um, it's also been relayed that I am this big bad guy and I had a charge for evading arrest in 2017. Is which they keep trying to play but in reality that charge came about before me and kelly ever even met and it was disposed of during our marriage it never took place during my child's lives i was there for my kids i never once um wouldn't feed my kids and i'm sure anybody can see through that um that was a big part of my family's life my children's life my my parents were a big part of the children's life since day one they were there to see the children born but they have been denied access knowing she stated that my parents lived in california so i don't know how that would interrupt 
with me being involved in a phone call when she knew my parents were 2,800 miles away. But she's done everything she can to take me and my family away from the children. Um, the same that was done with her oldest child um, that she later lost custody of. It's a great picture they painted. I'm by far no means innocent of anything, but I've never hurt my kids or put them in danger. And my ignorant ways when I was younger and things I did happened before um, my children were born and was never taking place in their presence. Um, brought up a charge from Grand Traverse County, which was dismissed and um, there's going to be a civil suit when this divorce case is over with against the county for that. Um, Cause there was no charge. It was resisting arrest with no charge there to begin with um, or crime committed. But I haven't done anything to my children, but been kept away from them as long as possible to inflict as much emotional damage on me and my family as she can. Um, I, uh, I understand how somebody that can have children at home 24 leave and all of a sudden it's not okay for the other parent to be there. Um, makes no sense to me. It's a proven fact that children that don't have fathers in their lives um, do not turn out well. And that's not, that's, you can look that up anywhere online. But this whole thing has been just to get full custody of the kids over vengeance. And I think looking back at everything said, you can see through lies. There's there's proof there, whether I was allowed to admit it or not, because of anything that there's proof there. I think that there needs to be joint custody between parents. I believe there needs to be no communication between parents and drop off places or set up throughout the United States of America at police stations for transfers of children. Um, I'm the only one that financially provides for my children and she has never provided for children since day one, other than when it's convenient for her. Um, and when it's convenient for her, she can provide for them. She she has had jobs she, she can provide, um, and she chooses not to financially support the children. Um, she works the system very well. Um, and I think the kids need their father in their life. I think it's uh, detrimental to their to them to have their father in their life that's always been in their life since day one. And I can't imagine the brainwashing and what's been said to keep the children away from their father. Um, I do not have the means to drive across country to see my kid for three hours. That doesn't even seem right on any level. Um, and, and I don't believe that I should have to pay to talk to my children on the phone when I've been a part of their life since day one. And she said she's been the sole caregiver for these children, which is proven a lie amongst other lies. I'm just think that the kids should have joint custody so they can have both of their parents and and live a happy life and spend time with their grandparents while they're still here that have known them since day one. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Sheldon. Thank you, Your Honor. This section began with the defendant's petition for emergency jurisdiction and custody under UCCJEA. And on October 6th and 7th hearing took place where the judge Witten granted sole legal and sole physical custody to the minor children to the defendant and allowed the defendant to return to Texas with the children and granted weekly Zoom parenting time and monthly in-person parenting time to be supervised by a supervising agency, namely Hereford Agency in Texas. 
Uh, plaintiff is now requesting that the court review the prior order and grant him sole legal and sole physical custody of the children, granting defendant the reasonable parenting time. Um, the parties were married on March 28, 2015, and it is established through testimony of the defendant that plaintiff has marginalized, manipulated, intimidated, physically and verbally abused the defendant. Further exasperating his behavior, he has abused their children on multiple occasions with verbal and physical threats and has harmed the children emotionally and physically throughout the party's marriage. In particular, Mr. Misri testified that there was physical abuse of the minor child Hunter. Yeah, he, Mr. Reed snapped and punched Hunter in the face that blood ran, blood um, in his teeth due to his punch on June 24, 2022. And on July 24, 2022, Mr. Reed grabbed Hartley by the hair and dragged her on the ground. And his behavior has continued on July 29, 2022, when Ms. Reed left the state with their children and the family dog. And on July 30th, 2022, uh, Mr. Reed tracked her down by locating her Jeep Rubicon by activating the GPS, GPS system and then remo removing the fuses and then waiting for her to come out of the hotel. Mr. Reed then took Hunter from Mrs. Reed at the hotel parking lot and Ms. Reed could not drive the car to pursue. Mr. Reed took Hunter and refused all parenting time for Mrs. Reed from July 30th until October 6, 2022. Ms. Reed came to Michigan on September 22nd, 2022 to pick up Hunter at Mr. Reed's request, but he refused to provide the child and did not allow any parenting time other than sitting in the same vehicle, unable to touch her son, while Mr. Reed berated her and called her names. He used Hunter as a pawn, clearly, to get Ms. Reed back and threatened and manipulated her to get to her to break down and come back to the relationship, come back to Michigan. Mr. Reed refused to share any medical information when Hunter was had his wrist broken while he was in Mr. Reed's care. Mr. Reed had to call, Ms. Reed had to call every doctor in Grand Traverse County to find out where Hunter was receiving treatment. Due to the domestic violence history, um, he also has criminal history that includes convictions for felony evading arrest in 2018. Um, he was arrested for making ter terroristic threats and burglary of a vehicle in 2018. He was arrested for multiple instances of domestic violence against the defendant. Plaintiff was on um, probation. And on, while he was evading these arrests, he was on Texas's 10 most wanted list and was extradited from California to Texas to face felony charges. Based on the best interest factors throughout the marriage, um, pursuant to the Child Custody Act, a child should not be moved from an established custodial environment. Uh, since July for July 2022 for Hartley, and since October 6th, 7th of 2022 for Hunter, these children have been placed with my client, Miss Reed, and they look to my client for guidance, discipline, necessities of life, and parental comfort. Um, therefore, my client has established custody environment. Uh, she has been the primary caregiver for the children uh, since they were born. The children have and continue to look to her for guidance, discipline, and necessities of life. This is fur further supported by the fact that plaintiff did not have any contact with the children from um, July 2022 for Hartley in October 2022 for Hunter until um, February of 2023 by Zoom only. And he, Mr. Reed had two months of parenting time by Zoom. Then, um, then it was, it, there was testimony from Hereford Investigations um, that his parenting time was discontinued. Um, they were no longer willing to serve 
um, due to the fact that he has um, evidence of evidence of bullying behavior. He was harassed, harassing the company so much so that it interfered with their business. Uh, in general, um, Mr. Reed has shown that he is a domestic abu abuser who does not feel that he is abusive in any way. He denies these facts. He denies the reports. Um, the exhibits will show that he has called and admitted uh, on the record that he has called my client names um, in front of the children, in the hearing of the children. He has admitted to these behaviors. He does not deny that he took the child. Um, and yet he continues to blame my client for his bad behavior. Um, love and affection of the child, there, there's minimal love and affection for the children at this point. There may have been bond and affection for the children with the father. However, his maladaptive parenting behavior that he exhibits uh, or exhibited through hair for investigation interfered with his ability to bond with the children. Uh, therefore, defendant is favored under this factor. Um, at factor B, the capacity and disposition of the parties involved to give child love and affection and guidance and continue the education and raising the child and their religion or creed, if any. Since Hartley and Hunter were born, defendant has primarily provided them with love and affection and guidance. She has the capacity and disposition to continue such care and has done so. Uh, plaintiff's abusive behavior towards defendant, his criminal activity, financial control, his uh, family parenting time has been suspended due to his den the denial of services. His refusal to exercise his parenting time uh, in person demonstrates that he would have difficulty providing appropriate guidance or care to the children. Therefore, defendant is favored under this factor. Factor C, the capacity and disposition of the parties involved to provide the child with food, clothing, medical care, and other remedial care. Although he uh, plaintiff does provide some child support, he was um, not providing them until he was uh, forced to be garnished of his wages. During that time, um, during that time, defendant ensured that the children were fed, clothed, taken to the doctor, dental appointments, and even during the marriage, this was solely um, Ms. Reed's job. And Mr. Reed had worked obviously to provide financially. However, he was not there to care for the children. He was not available for the children's needs, rarely provided and support other than working full time. Mr. Reed has provided minimal child support for the children since the separation. He has not provided any gifts for the children for their uh, first Christmas apart, does not understand that it is highly damaging to the children, that they're, the way that he treats them, um, he does not show proper affection towards them. He does not show uh, interest towards them, as is evidenced by the exhibits um, given by the Hereford investigations. And therefore, defendant prevails until under this factor. Factor D, the length of time the child has lived in a stable, satisfactory environment and the desirability to maintaining this continuity and the permanence as a family unit of the existing or proposed custodial home. The children have lived in a stable and satisfactory environment ever since defendant and the ch children fled the party's joint home um, on July 29, 2022. Defendant currently resides in a home um, that she rents from her mother in Texas and is close to supportive family members, extended family members who have provided support for the defendant. Defendant is working part-time, currently seeking a full-time employment Hartley is enrolled, and as is uh, Hunter, they're attending school now, is continuing the education. Um, and Hunter is waitlisted for the daycare services and has um, will be enrolled into therapy uh, due to the separation anxiety that he experienced. Um, While, on the other hand, uh, Mr. Reed remains in the home where the parties live together. However, it is a rental home. It is not known whether uh, Mr. Reed will continue to reside in that house 
uh, he had indicated on the testimony that he is planning to move that uh, that was three months ago, two months ago. Therefore, defendant is favored under this factor. Factor E, the permanence as a family unit or existing or proposed custody home or homes. Because of the violence that they faced in their home with the plaintiff, defendant and the children have had to completely reestablish their lives, find new housing, seek employment, support network, medical and therapeutic assistance for the children and daycare. This has been a monumental task for the defendant and her efforts have resulted in a safe and stable environment in which the children are able to thrive, requiring that the children again be uprooted from the home they're now settling into and removed from the custody of uh, defendant. Uh, they have looked to for love and affection their entire life would be counter to their best interests. Therefore, this factor is favorable to the defendant. F, the moral fitness of the parties involved. The issues of parties' relative fitness to provide for the minor children, if the moral disposition of each party is demonstrated by their individual conduct. The conduct is only relevant if it is the type of conduct that necessarily has a significant influence on how one functions as a parent. Fletcher versus Fletcher, 447, Mish, 871-1994. The evidence indicates that throughout their relationship and since their separation, plaintiff has been physically, financially, verbally, and emotionally violent towards defendant in order to create a climate of fear and maintain power and control. In addition to the violent behaviors directed at the children's mother, plaintiff has also shown that his fitness is lacking based on his multiple prior convictions and recent criminal activity, the multiple messaging and harassing behaviors, his disposing of the marital properties, and general disregard for the law and the court system. Plaintiff's inability to look beyond how he feels he has been wronged in this action, in addition to his continuous lashing out at agencies and individuals who have attempted to step in to help um, his case, show that his focus is not at all on his children's well-being, but is entirely self-focused. On the contrary, since her separation from plaintiff, uh, defendant has done very well response, uh, responding to the children, providing for the children for their best interest. Defendant is a moral parent, um, therefore an appropriate custodial parent. Therefore, defendant prevails under this factor as well. Factor G, the mental and physical health of the parties. Defendant has been diagnosed with anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic dis stress disorder. And she receives regular counseling and she had indicated that she, since she has left Michigan, she has not been taking any other medication other than acid reflux and some pain medication as needed. She, her health has improved. Defendant has no drug addiction history or any health issues that impacts the parenting of these children. It is unknown whether plaintiff has been diagnosed with any mental or physical health issues. However, based on plaintiff's violent, erratic, and harassing behaviors, it is clear, clear that he does in fact suffer from some untreated, undiagnosed mental health problems. Defendant believes that it would be in the best interest of the minor children for the plaintiff to be required some type of domestic aggression or uh, abuse class at his own expense and actively participate in co-parenting classes um, for a period of time. Uh, therefore, defendant prevails until under this factor as well. J, the willingness and ability of each of the parties to facilitate and encourage a close and continuing parent-child relationship between the child, children, and the other parent. This is a difficult case where defendant Defendant initially attempted to facilitate a healthy relationship with the minor children and the plaintiff and request the parenting time with Hunter after his uh, abduction from her care on July 30th, 2022. However, Mr. Reed continued to abuse, taunt, and harass Ms. Reed and use Hunter as a pawn to get her to come to Michigan on multiple occasions. Even after the supervising, supervised parenting time was ordered by court, Mr. Reed exercised his Zoom parenting time from February 2023 to April of 2023. 
Defendant attempted to stay cordial and communicate through a family wizard app. Since this time, plaintiff has repeatedly given reason to plaintiff and the court to limit his access to the children to ensure their safety. Plaintiff continues to exhibit the same abusive behaviors that the Hereford investigations um, terminated their services and assistance to the plaintiff. Therefore, defendant prevails under this factor. Factor K, domestic violence. Um, we've talked about domestic violence over and over again, Your Honor. The evidence will and the exhibits will detail those um, incidences. It is serious. The seriousness of uh, plaintiff's violent behaviors are made even more profound given that their marital property, given that, um, I apologize, given that he is refusing to exercise his parenting time. He's refusing to acknowledge his role. He is accusing my client of playing the victim and continue to laugh, mock, and um, lack any insight into these type of behavior uh, as exhibited by him today and at every hearing that we've had so far. Therefore, this factor, under this factor, defendant prevails. Factor L, any other factor considered by the court. The substantial presence of plaintiff's parents' involvement in this case is also relevant. Um, they have enabled and supported and defended uh, their son, Mr. Reed's actions and refused any, uh, any parenting time for Hunter with his mother. And it is apparent even today that the testimony by Mr. Shanks that he does not believe that Mr. Reed poses any threat um, to the children or to my client. Um, pursuant to also Child Custody Act, MCL 722.21 and 722.27a, the reasonable likelihood of abuse or neglect of the child during the parenting time, it is reasonable that the children will experience some type of verbal and emotional abuse and potentially physical abuse based on the prior incidents. During the time that they resided together, children witnessed and were home even if they were not with, uh, witnesses to these incidents. Um, plaintiff was violent with the defendant. The supervising agency ultimately refused to provide any services because they were unable to ensure the safety of their staff. And further supporting this conclusion that plaintiff exhibits abusive behaviors. Any less res restricting access to the children after this hearing would place the children in danger to protect the minor children. Plaintiff's parenting time should be supervised with the supervision by uh, a third party that is court certified supervising agency. As I indicated previously that his parents are not appropriate to supervise um, the parenting time for these children. There will be no accountability or transparency by the plaintiff's parents. In this case, the history of domestic violence, the reasonable likelihood of abuse of a parent resulting from the exercise of parenting time. Based on the exhibits from Hereford investigations, it is clear that the history of domestic violence is repeating and currently ongoing through the Zoom, even the Zoom uh, parenting time, and that any opportunity for further harassment or abuse, Mr. Reed will take and abuse uh, my client. And whether a parent has frequently failed to exercise reasonable parenting time, plaintiff, again, did not see Hartley from July 30th until present, Hunter from October 7th, 2022 until present in person. Pursuant to the October 7th order, he is allowed in person supervised parenting time, but he has yet to exercise that. He blames that on the uh, employment. However, the parenting time allowed through that supervision is on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, and he it's once a month. Even if he can do once every other month, I think any father would have done that, but he is refusing to see the children. D, the threatened or actual detention of the child. And we've gone over this regarding abduction of Hunter and what had happened to the child. 
There is no modification requested by the defendant as to the child support. Um, no child support modification is requested. For all the reasons set forth uh, here, defendant requests that this court place physical and legal custody of the minor children with her, given plaintiff's criminal behavior, erratic behavior, harassing and violent behavior. Defendant further requests that this court award um, plaintiff parenting time supervised by a court certified supervising agency within 40 miles radius of uh, the current residence of my client and paid for by plaintiff. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you all very much. The court will take the matter under advisement and they'll issue a written opinion.